Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to Ptech Chemistry Channel. In these last lecture tutorials, I'll go through a series of questions, basically going through how to use the table of results for the testing of cations, anions, gases, as well as flame test of cations. So in these next questions, we have solid air and we also have aqueous solutions. Aqueous basically means they dissolve in water. This is a solution B. A is an element and it's in the form of a grape powder. Solution B contains one cation. Cation basically means positive ions. And then you have one anion, basically meaning negative ions. It is yellow color. So yellow color, colored solid, usually colored compounds, usually means that they contain transition elements. And the specifically the ions that they might contain could be iron 2 plus, iron 3 plus, Cu2 plus, Cr3 plus. These are in the table of tests for cations. These are the ones that will give you color precipitate when you add in the sodium hydroxide or ammonia. So typically these particular ions, they will form colored compounds as a result of these, well, one of these cations being present. Now we place a spatula load of solid A in the test tube. We add acid, acid plus this element A. We test the gas with lighted splint, lighted splint. What is the test for lighted splint? Uh, well, lighted splint is used in the test for hydrogen gas. You see lighted splint, it pops with a lighted splint. It's the one where the fire was still uh, burning and it will get extinguished with a pop sound. Hydrogen gas diatomic molecule H2 there. So what kind of reaction will give you the H2? Well, we know that it has to be metal, reactive metal plus acid, give you metal salt and also hydrogen gas. This relates to the topic on reactivity series, where you have learned about the posokama and then the zil, Zn. I stands for ions, the lead is Pb, and we've got these metals which are below hydrogen, copper, silver, gold. So hydrogen is there, and acid, acid contains H plus from the acid, base, and salt topic, and H2 is basically the metal, the more reactive metals above hydrogen can displace hydrogen from the acid which contains H plus. So first of all, we will see bubbles. If you say bubbles or you say effervescence, that will be fine. Effervescence, you can also see this from the table under test for carbonate. Effervescence means rapid bubblings. And then what happened to the test? The test was using lighted splint. So the lighted splint will extinguish or it burns with a pop sound. So the pop sound is characteristic of, you know, Hydrogen gas, they want the gas which is given off, it's just hydrogen. They didn't ask for the name. If you put down the formula H2, it will also be correct. If you put down the formula H, it's definitely wrong because hydrogen is a diatomic molecule as I shown you in the previous lecture tutorial and also from year 9's structure and bonding. Now here, our conclusion is that the cation is ion 3 plus. So ion 3 plus in solution is a yellow solution. But then when you add sodium hydroxide to it, iron 3 plus will give you a red brown precipitate, such as the observation stated in the table, iron 3 plus, sodium hydroxide, red brown precipitate, insoluble in excess NaOH. So what we have here, well, hang on. What we have here is it will turn to a red brown precipitate and it is insoluble in excess. In this next question, our conclusion tells us iron 3 changed to become iron 2. So the yellow solution will now change to become iron 2 plus solution. And iron 2 plus solution is very light or very pale green, as you will have seen as I demonstrated in the lecture tutorial. On the practical tutorial, I think video number one, if I'm not mistaken. So it's very, very light green in color. It's not a precipitate, it's a, a solution, okay? Now, of course, when you filter the mixture, we filter the mixture, the filtrate, it will contain iron 2 plus aqueous, the light green or very, very pale green solution. And you will get a precipitate if you add some sodium hydroxide we are going to test for iron 2 plus now because the iron 3 plus has been converted to iron 2 plus. So on the iron 2 plus, 
and sodium hydroxide, I get a green precipitate insoluble in excess, turning brown as it rusts on the surface to form iron 3 hydroxide. So what we get is we get a green precipitate. So a precipitate is formed and what color is the precipitate is green. The name, well, we have iron and this is iron 2 because, you know, the iron 3 has become iron 2. With the Roman numeral, this is the cation. The precipitate is the metal hydroxide. You have just added sodium hydroxide to it. So it's called iron 2 hydroxide there. We have this next test where we add some nitric acid and then silver nitrate. So the silver nitrate there is basically test for halite, which is chloride, bromide, and iodide. You can have a look at your table and you contain chloride ion, which is Cl minus. If we follow up with the table, we have chloride Cl minus. When we add the silver nitrate solution, we're going to get white precipitate, white PPT and here therefore you will say white precipitate you see how the wording above they spell it out in full that is because in the theory paper you are not allowed to write ppt the spelling for precipitate p-r-e-c-i-p-i-t-a-t-e -E. a lot of people think they can spell it but they couldn't it takes a bit of practice such as the identity of the metal in solid A, it can react with acid. It can react with acid, but also at the same time, we are doing a test tube reaction. Test tube reaction. Do not go for sodium and potassium. These are very dangerous, very explosive, okay, very violent reactions with acid. So we don't do it in the test tube, we don't do it in the school laboratory, especially not with a spatula lot, where means a lot of the reactive metal. So you can choose any of these metals, uh, and they can react with acid, perhaps not the aluminium, because aluminium is protected by aluminium oxide protective layer. And there is also stated in the topic on metals as the very last thing in the syllabus. If you watch the last lecture on the metals, the very last syllabus say aluminium looks unreactive because of the protective layer of aluminium. So you could have gone for magnesium. Oops, sorry. You could have gone for magnesium or zinc or calcium or lead. Okay, so magnesium or zinc or calcium, those those are sensible reactive metals, but not too reactive that is dangerous. Now write the formula of the compound in solution B. Solution B contain chloride. That is what the conclusion said here in English. We also have solution B containing iron 3 plus. The cation is iron 3 plus. So you have iron 3 plus, 3 and 1 based on the valency, based on the charges of the ions. These are what you call valency the combining power based on the ions and to work out how many of these ions we need we do crisscross of the valency it basically means one of the iron 3 plus three of the cl minus and you can see the charges plus three adding together with minus one minus one minus one altogether the formula is fecl3 the name is called iron bracket three in roman numeral iron three chloride they want formula they don't want the name if you give the name you already lost the game in this next question number four we have a sample of a green powder e we heat it up in a test tube and then we get a gas bubble the gas into lime water lime water turn milky this is the test for carbon dioxide you can have a look in the table of result so state the identity this is definitely carbon dioxide and there is one n ions n ion meaning negative ion if you refer back to the earlier table so this was the test for gas turns lime water milky carbon dioxide gas there was one n ion in here they give you carbon dioxide carbon dioxide gas came from the carbonate co3 three oxygen two minus charge co3 two minus year nine chemical formula year 10 test for anion reacting with any acid year 10 acid bases and salt topic giving you carbon dioxide what is the test what is the result what's the identity the anion is carbonate ion so we just fill it in there what is the identity of the anion is carbonate anion 
Now draw a label diagram. Every diagram must be label. And what you are doing is you are heating up the solid. So I am just going to bubble the gas into lime water. So I have a separate test tube. And inside this test tube, I will have lime water. So I have this thing called delivery tube. I have shown this in the lecture tutorial, sorry, not a lecture tutorial, but a video on the practical tutorial part two, I think experimental tutorial part two in the same playlist for experimental uh, and experimental chemistry, which is this topic, qualitative analysis. So what we have there is powder E. How do you heat things up in the lab? You use a Bunsen burner. And you don't want the gas to escape upward, so you have a rubber bunk uh, to prevent the gas escaping there. But you have a sideway delivery tube so that you bubble the gas into the lime water. So the tube there must go into the lime water there. Level diagram, gas collected will turn lime water milky there. Now this student placed the black powder F into a beaker of sulfuric acid and heat it. And then you filter the mixture. The liquid, the two test tube, basically that is what you call the filtrate. Filtrates because this is the liquid that passed through the filter paper. It's blue in color. This is an indication of copper 2 plus aqueous cations. So what's the identity of the cation? It's not copper. Copper is a metal. Copper 2 as stated in the table of cations. And when you add it, sodium hydroxide to it, you get a pale blue precipitate that is definitely copper 2 hydroxide being formed. The flame test is blue green. This is not in the combined science syllabus, uh, but then I'm just telling you now this is the test for Cu2 plus. This is the flame test. Again, that is not in your syllabus, but this definitely tell you it's copper 2 plus already. Now this blue solution is a result of copper 2 oxide plus sulfuric acid and they will form a salt because this is your sulfuric acid, this is your metal salt. The salt coming from sulfuric acid is called a sulfate, so there's copper 2 sulfate. This is called a basic oxide reacting with acid and you will get the water, so the O and the H2 there, so that is your water being formed. This one contains copper 2 plus, and that is why it is a blue solution. But this thing is insoluble in water, so it just come out as a black solid, okay? So this is insoluble in water, that is your black solid, and uh, you use excess of acid so that all of this react and if you didn't use excess acid you can filter it so they can remove the actually you you react with excess of basic oxide because this is in the salt preparation topic under salt preparation topic you would use excess of this insoluble basic oxide so that all the acid reacts and then you can filter off the insoluble basic oxide and collect the filtrate where you can concentrate it until saturated, allow it to cool and crystals will form. Filter the crystals, wash the crystals with distilled water and then dry in between filter paper. That was in the salt preparation, acid bases and salt topic. The identity of G will be the copper to sulfate if you are the type who like formula, you can write it as Cu2 plus SO4 2 minus, so one of each. Now this identity of the black powder has to be the copper 2 oxide, which is a basic oxide. Again, Cu2 plus O2 minus, so one of each of these 2 plus and 2 minus. And that's it really for that 7 marks question. This reaction is called neutralization reaction between an acid and a base giving you salt and water there. In these next questions, we have test carry on two crystalline solid. Uh, we have a portion of solid A, we heat it, we heat it. So we get a gas and we test it with lime water. This is the test for carbon dioxide. So the lime water will change from, you know, lime water will change from colorless solution because it says change. So that means there is a change. So you go from colorless solution to cloudy or milky 
or a white precipitate as you have seen it in the experimental video part two so you have the test you have the results now you must write down the identity carbon dioxide is present or you can say the gas is carbon dioxide now you have another solid b and now you test it with lighter splint extinguish so there is no pop sound no pop sound they did not mention pop sound so the gas is not the gas is not hydrogen is a negative test because lighter spleen giving you pop sound is the test for hydrogen uh, if i show you the table test of a hydrogen lighter spleen pop sound hydrogen is present no pop sound with a lighter spleen no pop sound so not hydrogen carbon dioxide lime water turn milky so what happened there is we were told the lime water changed as it did so there is a change in the lime water the same way colorless solution to milky so we can say the gas is carbon dioxide we can also say carbon dioxide is present uh, just like that okay a portion of solid air was dissolved in water you add universal indicator i managed to record a video of myself doing this in the lab because i took an acid you could have any acid so this is a H plus because every acid contains hydrogen ions. This is in the acid base and salt topic, hydrogen ion H plus. So have a look in that experimental uh, video that I'm gonna attach to this. So what I have here is hydrochloric acid and you guys are just doing cleaning up, is it? Okay, go on. So hydrochloric acid. And you can add the universal indicator, which is green in color, and it should go red. So from green to red color, that is just hydrochloric acid or any strong acid. Universal indicator will change from green to red. And now I'm back. So you saw the color of the universal indicator change from green, green solution, and it turned red. Uh, it turned red because I used sulfuric, or I forgot was it hydrochloric or nitric. These are strong acid. It will go red. Uh, whereas for this pH six, these were in the acid, base, and salt topic. So you have pH one to three. Universal indicator will turn red for very very low pH because these are strong acid. And then you also have uh, these around pH 5 to 6 and it will just be orange yellow so not as intense not as strong so that one is just weak acids such as the one present in your fruit in the vinegar so again the I did not have a demonstration video for this this will just change from green to orange or you can say orange yellow or you know either one of these color would have been all right green is basically ph7 so at ph7 universal indicator is green in color there I believe this is the end of the tutorial set of questions the set of tutorial questions actually so we have solid a mixed with solid b and you put in some distilled water you get a gas you want to measure the volume of the gas okay this is not test for gas this is measuring the volume of gas so you need a gas syringe because gas syringe has uh, graduations it has lines allow you to read the volume or you can use the inverted measuring cylinder method so either of these methods would do we cover a lot of these from red of reaction topic so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna quickly sketch out some diagram so this is called a rubber bunk it's basically a stopper and then i have my side arm my side arm is going to be connected to this thing called gas syringe and you gotta be able to spell it out gas syringe and it's only a good gas syringe because it has got readings on the gas syringe and what i have there is a solid a plus solid b plus distilled water and i have it in a conical flask stop it there so that the gas gets collected inside the gas syringe or you could do the other alternative method which is to collect the gas over a measuring cylinder like this and then we're gonna have a container a water trough so this is filled with water 
and this has to go in like this and then what is very important is my measuring cylinder must have lines so these are measuring cylinder it allows you to displace water if you fill it up to the very top and then you inverted it at the same time i must also have a rubber bunk in order to prevent my gas from escaping i will also have this solid a solid b combined together and that is the reaction that give me the gas there so yeah just like that so alternatively you have uh, this other method but uh, gas syringe is obviously the easier one to draw without drawing this okay and just like that any diagram must be level and you get all the three marks for designing this experiment to measure the volume of gas not to test the gas but to measure the volume of gas you need these lines on the gas syringe you need these lines on the measuring cylinder there and that's it really for this overall topic, this lecture tutorial series for qualitative analysis. This is for the combined science, either for the IGCSE or the all-level chemistry curriculum, suitable for any 14 to 16 years old students doing the uh, combined science or the coordinated science curriculum all around the world. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to click the button on the bottom right to subscribe to my channel. Follow me at ptet.chemistry, that is at ptet.chemistry on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter and Telegram to get connected. I'll see you in the next tutorial video.